Hominids by Mr. Amster. Before you begin, please make sure that you have a sharpened pencil or pen and a highlighter. As you can see in this drawing, early hominids started out as creatures very similar to primates before developing all the way into us, the doubly wise man, Homo sapiens sapien. Here's a little look at a tree of humanity that we'll look at later in, in the uh, year. Here is the Artipithecus group, the first known group that is capable of walking on two feet, the Austropithecus group, where Lucy comes from, the Paranthropus group, which we won't talk about that much. They're mostly known for their strong jaws. And the Homo group, which consists of the Homo sapiens, Homo sapien neanderthal, and us, the Homo sapiens sapien. And Cro-Magnum is in there as well, but they're really the same thing as the Homo sapien. Key vocabulary. If at any time you feel that this is going too fast, please make sure to pause the video, finish writing out the word before hitting play. First word, nomad. A nomad is a person with no permanent home. They travel, for the most part, following animal herds. If the animal herd stays in the same place for a while, they're going to be able to stay in the same place for a while, which is very helpful and easy for them. For the most part, they're living under trees or in very basic structures. Paleoanthropologists. These are people who study the earliest hominids. Paleo means old. Biped. And this is the ability to walk on two feet. And it made, easier, it made it easier for hominids to collect food. But what else do you think was really helpful for them? Why would having two hands be something that would be very effective? Hunters and gatherers. This is a type of society in which most or all of the food is obtained from wild plants and animals. Up until the Neolithic age, all societies were hunters or gatherers. For the most part, it would be males being hunters and women and young children being gatherers. Trepanning. Ever have a headache you can't get rid of? Well, in ancient times, they believed, and medieval and prehistory times, they believed that it was a demon that was inside your head, and they needed to get it out. How are they going to get it out, you say? By jamming a spike into your temple and letting the demon come out. Pretty messed up, huh? Well, this process of trepanning is one of the first medical things we have evidence of. It definitely seems like it'd be an effective way to get rid of the headache, although it might not be the best for your overall survival. Paleolithic. Paleo means old, lithic means stone. Old Stone Age. Mesolithic. Meso means middle, lithic means stone. Neolithic. Neo means new. New Stone Age. Agriculture. Agriculture is the business of farming, and its creation allows for a stable food supply to take place. There are many who would think that it's actually invented or discovered by women. Please make a note of that. And that it was only after the tools that came into doing it, the plowing and the hard day labor, that they actually made men do it.
Domesticating. It means to tame, and it usually means an animal. Generations of breeding take place, and it also involves them living in close association with human beings as a work animal and eventually pets. This close association takes place, and animals lose the ability to, leave, to live in the wild. Who do you think was the first animal to be domesticated? Do you know the answer? Was it a? Lion. It was not a lion. It's a dog. Please write that down now. Surplus. It means to have an excess. The ability to create a food surplus allowed for human beings to focus on other things. Trading. The buying and selling or exchanging of items. If you have an excess of something and someone's got an excess of something else, this is a way to make trades. Say you're in school and you've got all the pencils and someone else has all the pens or paper and you need a piece of paper. You would trade an extra pencil for an extra piece of paper. That's why trading becomes so popular. Please take a moment and highlight your new vocab words, just the words. If you need to finish writing anything, please pause the video. Otherwise, we're going to keep going. I can walk on two feet now. Around seven million years ago, the first hominids began to inhabit the Earth. Three of the most famous paleoanthropologists of all time include Donald Johansson, and who discovered Lucy, and Lewis and Mary Leakey, who found Homo habilis. Now, at the time of their discoveries, they were thought to be the oldest living hominids we knew of. But, as you're going to find out very soon, we're still finding new ones and older ones all the time. The five early evolutions of hominid groups we are going to talk about are the Australopithecus, the Homo habilis, the Homo erectus, the Homo sapien neanderthalensis, and the Homo sapien sapien. Now, while they might seem related, they're not exactly a direct one to, one to five chain. There are other things that branch off, and in fact, Homo erectus is only on this because of its great discovery, because there's, we know it's not related to the Homo sapiens in any capacity. Please take a moment and pause if you need to finish writing anything. Otherwise, we're going to keep going. First hominid, Australopithecus afarensis, and it is known as the southern ape. The afarensis is the, co is the eastern coast of Africa in Ethiopia. Now the discovery in 1974 of Lucy was thought to be monumental. It was thought to be the first biped ever discovered. Of course, now we know that the Artipithecus was much older. Lucy's thought to be about between 3 and 4 million years old. And it's her footprints that we find near a volcano. She stands about three feet tall. And she has both human and ape-like features. She's still a very, you know, she still has a lot of hair in her body to keep her warm because she's not wearing clothing. And her brain is only about one-third the size of a modern human. And at least in her case, she appears unable to talk as her voice box does not seem to have been developed enough to make anything other than basic sounds. Please take a moment at this time and highlight unable to talk, 
three feet tall, Lucy, 1974, Donald Johansson, and Lewis and Mary Leakey, seven million years ago. Please feel free to pause the video. We're going to keep going. Here is a picture of Lucy. Notice still very furry, very much ape-like features, but upright and walking. Rise of the manly man. Well, he's very handy at least. The first hominid we're going to talk about in the Homo species is Homo habilis, known as the handyman. And he's known as this because he is the first known, I emphasize known, to make basic stone tools. And it's his evolution of hominid that creates the Stone Age. Hence, stone tools, Stone Age, he is the one who starts it. Make sure you write that down that he starts the Stone Age. Homo habilis is about 1.5 to 2 million years old, and again, is developing more human-like features than the previous hominids before them. They're about 4 to 5 feet tall, so roughly the same size as you guys right before you hit your growth spurts. And their brain is twice the size of Lucy, giving them more skills, and they're able to survive and live longer. And one of the other big fundamental changes is the ability to work in groups. I know sometimes it's not the most appealing thing, especially when the person you're working with doesn't come prepared, but working in groups is guaranteed to be more effective, especially when you're hunting, gathering food, or doing any of these tasks. And this is one of the reasons that Homo habilis is one of the most fundamental and important hominids ever discovered. Do you remember who is the one who found them? If you said the Leakies, you're correct. Our next person up is Homo erectus. And Homo erectus's name is called the upright man, hence erect. But it's a mistake. Why, you ask? Well, it's called the upright man because when it was discovered in, in 1891 off the coast of Asia, it's thought that we found it. We found the first human that was upright. But whoops, we were a little wrong, as you can already see with Homo habilis, Australopithecus, and Artipithecus. Turns out that the upright man was, well, not the best name to give it, but the name is stuck. And although it does not relate to later hominids, at least of later hominids like us, please make a note of that, does not relate to us, it comes up with one of the biggest discoveries of all time. It lived from about 1.8 to 2 hundred thousand BCE, around that time. It's using more advanced stone tools, and it's an evolution of the Homo habilis. It probably lived for a little bit alongside of it as some evolved. It is the first known hominid to be out of Africa, although we're still trying to figure out where because we found older hominid fossils in Asia of the Homo erectus. So we're still a little confused. It was also found in Europe. It's taller and thinner. And I want you to write this down. More athletic than previous hominids. It's able to move around a little bit. It's not that it's not stocky. It's it's very thin. It's athletic. It's something that can be effective for long-term movement. And it's larger brain allows it to make more s complex tools, including a very strong hand axe, which allows it to top, chop down trees and, of course, attack animals that are a little bit bigger than it. And with that axe, it builds shelters, huts that are made of branches that it's chopped down, and it l is able to live in colder climates. 
Now it's one last discovery though that will change everything. It is the first hominid we know of that has ever used fire. And that's really why it's allowed to leave Africa. Because Europe and Asia have cold months. And the ability to live in colder climates means you need to be able to keep warm. Now what does the skill allow them to do? Take a minute and write down two things you think fire would do for an early hominid. And your answers are going to be something we're going to talk about in class. So I'm not even going to give you the answer. Please take a moment now and put down your pencils and highlight first to use fire, first out of Africa, upright man, worked in groups, stone tools, and first in the Stone Age, and the handyman. Again, if you're feeling like we're going too fast, please pause the video. Otherwise, we're going to keep going. Here's a little picture of Homo habilis, and notice it's probably not exactly even, but here's Homo erectus, about a foot taller almost. That's probably on the smaller side for Homo erectus than on the taller side for Homo, erect, uh, Homo erectus. Probably be more like that. Rise of the modern man, the Neanderthals, also known as Homo sapien neanderthalensis. They're found in the Neander Valley in Germany in about 1856. If you recall, they found a bent-over old man and assumed all of the Neanderthals were bent over. But more knowledge has proved that that guy just had arthritis. Poor old man. And they lived from about 23,000 years ago to about 30,000 years ago. They're shorter and stockier than, previous, than the Homo erectus, but they're a lot stronger, especially than the Cro-Magnum, which is an early version of the Homo sapien. And they're, while they're very smart, they're able to make 60 types of tools that we have found, including knives, scrapers, spear points. The thing is, is they just weren't as advanced as the Homo sapien, and eventually the Homo sapien sapien. They lived in communities and hunted in organized groups, which is a good skill in why they were around as, as long as they were. But their disappearance is a mystery. We don't know why they left. It's mostly thought that they just were no match for the Homo sapien sapiens, and eventually just became extinct as the Homo sapien began to expand. Hopefully someday we'll find out the true answer. Now the Homo sapien sapien is known as the early modern human, or the doubly wise man. And actually it's the Homo sapien that becomes a next level up. We, find, we think we found the Homo sapien, but then we add on other things about it. And one of the earliest found ones is in 1879, where the first cave paintings show and show that this is a species that is finally able to express their feelings. They lived from about 200,000 years ago to the present. They're us. And we are going to evolve a lot in those 200,000 years. They are the first to reach the Americas by a land bridge, the Ice Age. How do we know this? Well, first of all, we've never found any other type of fossil in the, other, in the Americas. And because they're the only ones we find even in the northwest, northeastern part of Asia.
And they're known as a species that is able, and we're able, I guess, to be the best stone tool makers, hunters. And they're able to put hooks for fishing even. And once you figure out how to make hooks for fishing, it makes your hunting and gathering a, a lot easier. You don't have to chase after animals, especially ones that are faster than you. You just can sit there and fish away. They invented a spear thrower, a spear, and a bow and arrow. And that's one of the things that we know when we're looking at a Homo sapien sapien, is that they have a bow and arrow. It's clearly us. We have no evidence so far that any other species of hominid has able, been able to build one. And eventually these skills and the large brains allow them to discover agriculture and how to domesticate animals. It probably took a long time for them to observe that the same plants would grow again in the same spot and that certain seeds would grow again when you put them in the dirt. Eventually the trial and error paid off. Now some similarities is that they both existed side by side with each other. And they lived in communities and hunted in groups. They had a lot of similarities, just that the Homo sapiens sapiens had a more developed brain and eventually were able to overcome it. Having said that, the Homo sapien Neanderthal is much better in winter, much stronger in that climate. But the Homo sapiens made fires, built shelters, and were much more successful in that capacity. Please take a moment and highlight found in the Neander Valley, stronger than the Cro-Magnums, 60 type of stone tools, disappearance a mystery, first to reach the Americas, Invented bow and arrow, first to use agriculture and domestication. And here's a little peek. By the way, please pause the video again at any time if you need to catch up. Here's what the Neanderthal looks like. And here's the Homo sapien sapien. Here's us. The end. If you would like to keep watching it just a little bit, I'll show you the four major hominid groups. We have the Artipithecus. The Paranthropolis. Thropus, excuse me, group. Notice the large teeth and powerful jaws. The Australopithecus group, actually a little bit older than the previous one. And of course us, the Homo group, the modern humans. Homo habilis, the first one of its kind. Homo erectus, which kind of branches off away from us. And then us, the Homo sapien sapien. The end.